These are actual real inquiries I get about the trailer on what, maybe a bi-weekly basis. And all of them just as ridiculous as the last. This guy in particular asking if he can take his Toyota Corolla and he's gonna go pick up an F-250. Obviously this would be incredibly dangerous. Maybe not, maybe it wouldn't even budge. But I think a video series with this would be hilarious. I just don't know how to make it happen safely because I get contacted with ridiculous requests like this all the time. So you guys let me know, give me some ideas because it'd be great content to film uh, some of this stuff going down. A Toyota Corolla towing an F-250 on a 7,000 pound trailer. Yeah, that's all fun and games, but you know what's not fun and games? This is now the opportunity to change your life. And I've always wanted to do this, but this giveaway. Glad the two of you out there got that reference. But I'm serious, the giveaway does end tonight. That's in a couple of hours. This gorgeous GT500. I'm gonna be so sad whenever this thing is gone, but so thankful the one of you get to have it. And this absolute unit, the biggest tire setup we've ever done for a giveaway on this Duramax LTZ. I do a lot of the rollers for these vehicles, like these shots you're doing, I'm driving one of the vehicles, the camera car or the truck itself. This thing is insane to drive, insane. They both come with $30,000 in cash. And hey, how about you get to drive it? Better yet, own it for essentially free. Buy anything on the website, you get automatically entered to win both of these beautiful vehicles. So check out the website, 717 Supply. Hit them up down in the description. My small audience has won plenty of times in the past. Let's keep that trend going with you. Thank you for the support. Good luck. Oh yeah, you idiots believed me, didn't you? You thought that you could run your own trailer rental business and make a ton of money. I mean, it's what I've been preaching for the past couple of months, but in reality, this is a little tougher than it seemed to be. Now, hey, don't go blaming me because you took a loan out on a $10,000 Diamond Sea Trail, you're still making payments on it, and some Yahoo went out there and totaled the thing. It's not my fault. No, we're doing good, right? We're all doing good here with our trailer rental business. I mean, you rent this trailer out, and we're gonna start clearing like five extra thousand dollars a year. And I mean, after taxes, insurance, maintenance, the loan payment, hell, we might even be able to fit a grocery trip in there somewhere. Holy crap, I made a profit? Profit margins are razor thin with how expensive everything is. And then your trailer gets wrecked. Now what do you do? And with these trailer issues, we don't want to replace the parts that are broken with cheaper parts because that's all we can afford because now you have a liability on your hands with your brand new Diamond Sea trailer taking a beating by these renters and you put cheap tires, cheap bearings, cheap brakes, and cheap lumber. Before you know it, this thing's gonna be breaking every other trip and you're losing money and you're still taking a risk because God forbid this guy goes out and kills someone. So on top of all this, you're still paying for that expensive liability insurance to cover your butt in case some idiot does something stupid like that. <sighs> so you know what I like? Cheap, but quality. That's where Timu comes in. I don't say this lightly because Timu has it all. I'm serious, it, it literally feels like they have everything. So if you want something for cheap, but still have that satisfaction guarantee where if you don't like it, you can send it back within 90 days for a full refund, Timu's where it's at. We got wireless charging stations, impact socket sets, hydration packs, fly assault guns, we put this thing to work, headshot and fool. And for us old men who know about this, cabinet lighting is incredibly expensive. Bam, I got these for just a couple of bucks. Now it's daytime, but at nighttime, these things shine and look awesome. And you can change the color to anything you want or just flat white. With Christmas coming up, it's great for stocking stuffers or just regular gifts. These taco mag pouches can cost over $100 on some websites. This one, less than 10, and it works just as good. Even cool decorative outdoor items like this solar hot air balloon. They have such a broad spectrum of items. I think you could even buy nostalgia on there if you wanted to. They wanted me to cut that part out, I'm not. Timu offers free shipping and guaranteed delivery. I don't know about you guys, but a lot of my packages over the past couple of months have just been lost. With Timu, it's guaranteed. It's gonna arrive to your doorstep and it's free. I remember with my video game collection, last time I used Timu, I was able to buy these little protective acrylic cases. Even these little things are so expensive, but on Timu are incredibly cost effective and I can get twice as many for the same price from competitors. And what's so jarring is the quality is the exact same if not better. I mean, look at all that stuff they got on there. I mean, oh my God, look at that. What is that? Hit them up in the description. Thank you guys so much for the support. Use my coupon code for a big old discount. On with the show. Yeah, life's pretty sweet writing trailers, isn't it? I mean, you write your trailer, you make money. You write your trailer, you make more money. You write your trailer, someone pays you, you make more money. You write your trailer, you make money, someone pays you. Someone pays you. You write your trailer, you make more money. Someone's giving you a ton of money. You make money. Write your trailer, you make more money. You about making money. And then, you get that one renter. And all that sweet, sweet coinage you finally managed to gather. Because you had one bad renter. So this guy right here rented the trailer from me for a week. That's $500 plus $100 security deposit. Now, fortunately for me, 
He is a roofer. He tows trailers all the time, so there should be no issue. Unfortunately for me, whenever it comes to roofing, he was also doing some decking and other stuff like that, but unfortunately for me, roofing shingles weigh a ton, and you can fit four pallets on this trailer, and they can weigh upwards of 3,000 pounds a piece. That's 12 thousand pounds when these trailers are only rated for seven. So a lot of damage can happen very quickly. Good news for us, the weight of the trailer was not a factor. The driving skills, however, were. So the trailer was dropped off and I do my typical walk around and pressure check on all the tires. And this one was good. This one was also good. And our last one is, uh, well, it's zero. It's flat. He popped the tire. He curbed it uh, and I guess broke the bead or something. I have no clue. There's no holes in the tire, uh, but the tread's getting a little bit low on it. So jacked it up here, get this thing popped off, get her fixed up, replaced with a new tire. Yeah, I have no clue how he did this. A new wheel and tire like this for the trailer can run around $200. And if you're wondering, no, he did not get his security deposit back. You gotta return the trailer as you took it. Another big issue with these heavy loads or just general wear and tear is these boards can dry rot and fall apart. Take a listen to this. You let me know which one sounds different. Uh, yeah, that one is definitely gonna need replaced. If you were to set a heavy vehicle on this, the tire lands on that. Yeah, I could definitely see it cracking and falling through. So huge safety hazard, gotta take care of that really quick. back at the trailer parking lot y'all know we got the dump trailer that's been sitting for well too long honestly uh with it being broken down uh sort of a waste of money right now sitting idle not making money that sucks of course the flat trailer being the golden goose here making the most money uh but it's got its little issues here and there nothing too extensive not much to really complain about now the landscaping trailer this thing was a couple hundred bucks i think and uh yeah you can see two things here one i am a disgusting slob who has left the painting tray there so that ruined the sealer that looks awful i doubt that's going to come out and there's weeds growing through it and the reason for that is because this has been idle for so long so real quick before we get to that uh, i was able to seal the deck it looks good from a distance it looked better a couple days ago whenever this thing wasn't shot but gave us a new coat of paint Got rid of a lot of the rust on the fender, sanded that down to bare metal, repainted it, treated it, and it matches this deck, which like I mentioned, this deck is just gets worse and worse. Every renter, it seems, I noticed that there's less and less uh, sealant on this. Now this deck sealer is meant for foot traffic. You having a barbecue on your back porch, it's not meant for seven, 8,000 pound vehicles to be running all over it. So you can see this is holding up a lot better because well, it hasn't been used, but I really dig the matching fleet here. I think every trailer I get in the future, I'm going to do this on. Yeah, you can even see where they did like little burnouts uh, trying to get on the trailer because I imagine some of these vehicles front wheel drive and uh, maybe it's slick out. And uh, yeah, the, it'll really just tear up the deck of these trailers really quickly. Don't get a landscaping trailer, even though it's super cost effective. Go with the flat trailer. See what type of deals you can get. You don't have to get a super nice trailer. In my opinion, Diamond C, pretty freaking nice because they're going to get the crap beat out. These fenders were bent uh, prior to me purchasing it, but they look a little bit more beat up now. Like these tread marks, those weren't here before. But to be honest with you, I haven't really had that many bad renters. I've rented the trailer how many times now? Probably 50 plus easily. And, and it's held up pretty well. I mean, yeah, these ramps have a decent amount of rust on them, but it's nothing that's going to kill it. And that's not the renter's fault. The only thing so far that's been the renter's fault is the slight damage on the fenders here and the blown out tire. Other than that, the damage hasn't been bad at all. I'm sick of the wind. I would rather have snow, rain, anything. So let's head home uh, and, and just get out of these, the wind. I can't take it. Do you guys grease your balls? No, I'm being serious. Does your ball hitch actually have to be greased? You know, the hitch on the back of your truck that tows the trailers. Are you supposed to grease that? I've seen conflicting things online. I don't know what to believe. I don't really see what the benefit would be. Maybe it's a little quieter. I don't know. As far as I can tell, it seems like a waste of money, but maybe you guys can share your thoughts about it. Anyway, how do I deal with renters that just don't really take care of the product? Uh, if they tow to your trailer, you gotta go through insurance. It's as simple as that. That's why you have it, the low liability insurance through your LLC, which is your trailer rental company's designated LLC. That way they can't come take your home or something stupid like that if anything major happens. But they crack a board, they curb a tire, they pop a tire, they bend something, scratch paint, dings, dents, lost items like a ramp or a carabiner or a chain, like they snap a chain, something goofy like that I've seen happen with uh, 
other renters out there. I've seen a lot of stuff like that online. Put out a security deposit that you're comfortable with. It doesn't matter how high it is. I mean, you can't make it unreasonable like 500 bucks because they got to have some trust in you that you're going to give it back without throwing a stink or want to take them to court over it over something simple. My security deposit is pretty low. It's around $100. So if they bring the trailer back and it's messed up, I hang on to that. If it's less than 100 bucks, I'll break it for them, give them back what's owed. I don't keep the whole thing no matter what the damage is. I've never had to do that until now. So this is the first time I've kept a security deposit. The dude was a little weird about it, I could tell, but it's like, man, you're using this thing to make money, so am I. So like, we gotta make make amends here. You, you ruined a tire uh, that had good life left in it, enough to be worthy of uh, keeping the security deposit. Now, same thing with like if a board breaks or if something gets scratched or dented. You keep your security deposit, that's huge. This is where things get a little dicey. You know how these situations are. You rent a rent a car at, on a business trip or something like that, you sort of are a little careless with it in terms of, I don't know, maybe hitting the brakes a little bit too hard, accelerating, stuff like that, easy thing. That's how it's gonna be whenever you're running a trailer. So you can expect that renters are gonna treat this property not like their own. They're not gonna take great care of it. So you're gonna have to eat some of the cost. It's just the part of doing business, right? It's just part of doing business whenever you're renting trailers. So if you see damage that seems like it's gonna be a little bit more than your security deposit, if it's 50, double it, 100, something like that, man, that's just, like I say, part of doing business. But if you wanna push and the renter seems like they're gonna uh, give up the money, I'm gonna need 500 bucks or whatever you think the value is. Otherwise, I'm gonna have to speak to my attorney. That might not get them going, uh, and maybe you don't even have an attorney, but it's nothing to get a certified letter drawn up and mailed to their house. Usually they'll budge. Other than that, short of going to court, you better just say goodbye to that money and just write it off at the end of the year. Because you make so much money with these trailers, you're gonna need to write some stuff off. So writing losses like that off isn't always the worst. Yes, we prefer for them not to happen at all, but it's just the way that it goes. If you want all my tips and tricks on how to get out in front of this problem before it even happens, I have a playlist going here and I go through step-by-step -step on how to properly build your trailer rental business to make sure everything is airtight with documents. We go over insurance, how to advertise, uh, make sure that you get all the proper credentials from them before they rent it to protect your butt and make sure that you don't go to jail along with them. So. That's all she wrote, folks. Remember, the 717 Supply giveaway is still going on. Huge shout out to Timu. Likes are always appreciated. Later.